Hello everybody, this is Abraham with North Shore Computer Services and what we have here today is this older uh, iMac, it's uh, Core 2, uh, which is not going to run uh, the latest Mac OS, which is High Sierra at this time. Uh, it stops at about El Capitan, which is still okay, runs really slow on this Mac, in fact runs bad on this Mac. So what we're going to do is convert this into a Windows machine uh, using tricks uh, to make this sort of like a boot camp machine but boot camp does not allow on this particular machine to install Windows 10. So we're going to be installing Windows 10 on this machine uh, and running it natively on this machine. So to do this we need to do a trick. You cannot just connect uh, your Windows 10 installer and install it on this machine. Uh, it doesn't work. I've tried it. So, But it is possible and the way to do it is we have uh, a Windows 10 machine here. Alright. So we have installer connected, the hard drive from the other Mac connected, and we're going to start it up. Gonna push F12 for boot options. Uh, boot from the USB device. So the reason to revitalize that Mac is it has fairly good hardware, it has fairly good screen, and it's overall an all-in-one machine. If you're to buy a decent all-in-one machine, it's going to set you off about a thousand bucks today. Uh, aluminum case, you know, nice ergonomic, nice looking machine. Uh, true, it won't be Core 2, but it depends on what it is that you're asking from a machine. So if you all want, all you want to do is do uh, documents, emails, light internet, internet surfing, Core 2 works perfectly. There isn't a problem with a Core 2 machine. Uh, if you have a newer one, you know, like i3, i5, even better. Uh, most of the time, those machines will run uh, or be able to upgrade to High Sierra. So people who run or have the newer machines uh, wouldn't even consider um, fixing it up with Windows. But this is how it's done. So we're just going to run through the installer of Windows on this machine. And this is just a regular Dell, uh, same, Core 2 Duo. We'll just do, I don't have product key. Now, product key here is uh, a trick. Okay, so you're gonna have, you can run all this without having to activate Windows, okay? Uh, Windows will give you 30 days to use it. Um, after that, you're gonna have to buy um, you're gonna have to buy Windows license basically so for our purposes here that's not critical we're just going to install Windows on this hard drive and uh, once it's done it'll take a few minutes I will uh, pause the video and uh, once it's done we'll resume the recording Uh, like I said, this part will take about 15 minutes. So while that machine is preparing, we're going to take this apart. Now, I do have it all unscrewed. I just put it together nicely. So we're going to need a suction cup. For those who don't know how to take apart these Macs, 
You need a small suction cup to pull the glass. It's magnetically held. Then you're going to need to unscrew all these screws, unscrew the bottom for the memory. Uh, by the way, increasing the memory will help with speed of the machine. So this machine has uh, four gigabytes of memory and it's fine for basic operations of Windows. Uh, then you need to pull out four screws on this side and four screws on this side for the LCD. Tilt the LCD forward, disconnect uh, the LCD light cables. There are four cables that uh, carry light or for the light bulbs. This one is not an LED, so you get this uh, fluorescent light bulbs in there. Then you're going to need to find the LCD temperature sensor, disconnect that and the LCD uh, video cable. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six connections for this one. Uh, different Macs have different numbers of connections to the LCD. So once the LCD is off, the hard drive sits over here. As you can see, I pulled it out to put it in uh, the Windows machine. And now this one is prepped and ready to receive the hard drive with Windows installed on it. So let me switch this back over here. So here is the trick. You cannot do that with Windows 7 because when Windows 7 gets installed, uh, it marries itself to the hardware on the motherboard and somehow either deletes or I don't know, I think it was done intentionally in Windows 7 so that when you transfer a hard drive from one computer to another uh, you cannot uh, just pl place it from one into another it usually gives you a blue screen there are some instances where you don't get a blue screen but in most cases you will get a blue screen and uh, basically on Windows 7 you cannot transfer it with Windows 10 the trick is you can you can unplug it from one hard drive from one computer, plug it into another computer. This is where licensing comes in. So you install Windows 10 without a license on this basic machine, then you transfer it to your um, Mac basically, and then you buy a license and activate it with a, lo uh, with a Mac, which is, works perfectly fine. If you do not add license, like I said, in 30 days, you're going to start getting some messages from Microsoft that Windows is not activated by your key, blah, blah, blah. So, um, but you could still use it. Uh, they don't uh, forbid you from using it, so you're going to get messages. I don't know what's going to happen if you use it for more than 30 days. I just never had. But uh, that's basically the trick to it is that you um, install it on a machine that you have, a Windows machine transfer it to a Mac and it works. So let me pause it. There's a few minutes left in installation and we'll come back. So at this point the Windows has been installed. Um, one other trick that I want to mention um, do not have Wi-Fi or network connected to your computer. This will speed up your Windows installation tremendously. It will not ask you to create an online Microsoft account. It will not ask you to uh, do the updates. So it basically you save yourself about 15 minutes of work by not having any network connections in your um, computer. So this particular one only has, uh, um, you know, the, the Cat5 connection and uh, no Wi-Fi. So uh, in a few minutes, I'll I'll show what uh, uh, the savings, time savings. So the computer right now is finishing up. Uh, 
the installation of Windows. It just, uh, let me remove this glare. It is, uh... Sorry about that. There, it's better. Uh, so it's just finishing up. Uh, okay, so at this point, we're just going to go through answering questions. If uh, nobody ever did this before, um, you just answer to your country. We're in US and skip for the extra keyboards. All this can be added later. So see here, it's looking for a connection to the internet. Skip for now. You do not get these options if you are already connected. We'll just say admin for now. Skip for the password. You do not have to enter password. We don't want Cortana crap. Uh, we want to Accept this just because it's faster and now it's gonna take another few minutes to basically get your account set up and ready I'll pause it for now and in a couple of minutes voila we have Windows 10 interface here are a few things that I would highly recommend doing just because they make things easier later okay so we right click on a desktop we go to personalize and the hard drive is still cranking still finishing things up but uh, works fine we go to themes and uh, to the bottom of themes, desktop icon settings. And we want to enable computer user files and disable allow themes to change desktop items. We go to the lock screen and screen saver settings. This is a little period. And then change power settings. And then open up here and that's where they hit high performance okay this does not go well with uh, energy saving things but it goes well with performance of the computer that has been outdated um, choose what the power buttons do we want to have the press power button to shut it down that one is set there is one more So now that we have the My Computer enabled, right click on Not, click on Properties, and we go to Advanced System Settings, we go to Advanced Tab Settings, and then Adjust for Best Performance. Okay, and then OK. So what this does, it disables all the useless things that Windows throws at you which you're not going to miss. One more thing. Right click on the uh, um, taskbar and go to Cortana, hide it. It's completely useless. Takes half the taskbar. Uh, hide people, uh, this little icon right here. Now right click on the notification thing. Don't show app icons. Right click again, don't show number of notifications. I, in fact, I don't want to see any notifications at all. I don't care. Okay, we do not want Windows Mail, we do not want Microsoft Store, and we really don't want Edge. Chrome is the best. Okay, this one here for uh, Task View, it's okay. I